Hey there, now that we've got our devices set up and working with Cubase, it's time to go and make some music. It can be a bit daunting when you first load it up, so in this video we're going to go and look at some of the bare basics. Let's go and take a look. The very first thing you see when you load up Cubase is the Steinberg Hub. On the left hand side there's a wealth of information in the news and tutorial videos. You can also get access to the Steinberg support site, which we looked at in the first video. A good place to get started is to load a production template. If you load one up, it'll ask you where you want to save it. It may tell you that there's missing ports, and that's because these presets were designed with other interfaces. In the last video, we dealt with everything you need to know about setting up your audio interface and your audio connections. These templates can load different instruments and also audio tracks with effects, which will be relevant to whichever genre you selected. Before we get too carried away, I want to explain a few Cubase basics, and we need to go back to the Steinberg Hub to do that. Every time we start a new project, we open a new folder with a number of different files inside. Now we can either store these in a default location or my preference is to prompt for file location. That means when I create a new project or an empty project, it asks me where I want to store it. The very first thing I do every time is save my project. As soon as I save it and give it a name, the auto save will continue to auto save this project. So I'll have backup stored inside that folder that I've created. The help menu is a fantastic source of information. Type in something that you want to achieve. So for instance, if I want to add a track, I can type in add and it straight away shows me where I can add different types of tracks within the Cubase menus. The transport bar basically does exactly what it says. It gets you places. You can record, stop, play. You can cycle in between different markers. You can see where you are inside the project and you can also change the tempo. Pressing C on your computer keypad will toggle the metronome or click track on or off during recording and playback. As we click on different areas, you'll notice that zones are highlighted. We can show and hide these zones in the top right hand corner so we can configure this whole project window to suit our needs. The best way to learn about these zones is to actually do something. So I'm clicking the plus button to add an instrument track. I'm loading Groove Agent SE4. If you've got Cubase LE, you might want to add Hellion Sonic SE so you can start playing around with an instrument track. Groove Agent SE4 is empty, so to load sounds, we can right mouse click over the top of the Beat Agent to load a kit or a kit with patterns, or click on the preset bar at the top to load up the media bay where we can select and browse through genres. Double click on a drum kit to load it, and instantly samples are loaded onto each of these different pads. Go up to the Pattern tab and we can click on patterns, which will play in the same tempo as our project. As soon as we loaded an instrument, in the right zone, an instrument loaded up into the VST racks. Over in the right zone, we've got the two tabs at the top, the media bay and the VST racks. In the last video, we added a rack instrument where we assigned MIDI tracks. This time we're going to add a track. Rather than selecting an instrument, I'm going to select Browse. And now I go to the Media Bay, which is a library of all the presets and different types of sounds we have access to inside of Cubase. You can use the category search function to find a sound. Double click on it and it will load that sound into the instrument. You can open and close VST instruments by clicking on this Edit Instrument button in the track list. I've got that new track we've created selected, and now I'm going up and adding a new MIDI track, which will appear underneath. The cool thing about this is, if I had that track selected, this new MIDI track will instantly be routed to the very next MIDI channel or slot on Hellion Sonic SE3. So now I just double click on a new sound to load it into that slot, and my MIDI track, the new one that I've created, is routed straight over into Hellion Sonic SE slot 2. We can see this over on the left hand side in the routing. As we move between channels, you can see it's routed to different slots inside a Hellion Sonic SE3. Double click on the name in the track list to change the name. And as you do so, over in the right zone, the name will change in that instrument rack. I mentioned before that there's a lot of different ways of being able to achieve the same thing in Cubase. And if you're over in the right zone, you can quickly open an instrument by clicking on the E button. Now the right zone, also contains the all-important media bay, which is the next tab along at the top. 
The media bay is the heart and soul of Cubase. It's a major library of presets, sounds, effects, MIDI loops, MIDI patterns, instruments, and a number of audio loops. If we click on one, we can preview it. If we click on Align Beats to Project, Cubase will automatically time stretch that audio sample to fit in with the tempo of our track. Drag and drop it over to an empty area and instantly you've created an audio track. Let's go back to the home button in the media bay and select the file browser icon. I've got sample libraries stored on my external hard drives and I can view these different folders and select an audio file that I like. I can drag and drop that straight over into Cubase. If it's an external sample, Cubase will ask if I want to copy it to the working directory, which is fine. Pick up on this handle and drag it to the right to copy and paste an event. In a short space of time, we've added two instrument tracks, a MIDI track, and two stereo audio tracks. And we can move freely between these tracks and select them in the track list. If we move across to the left zone, we've got the all important track inspector which contains important track settings and we can use the handles to show and hide various settings in the inserts tab we can add an effect use the triangles to go through the different sub menus when you find an effect that you like double click on it and that effect will load up into one of the slots over in the left zone and the effect will load up out in the main window once again, you can click on the preset bar to access any number of presets that have been designed by engineers to suit specific recording and mixing situations. Whilst we're on the topic of mixing, we may as well go down and have a look at the lower zone, which contains the mix console tab. Moving past our faders to the left, we've got three buttons, which show us our inserts, which we can open and close, and also our sends, which we're going to deal with in the mixing video. Double click on any event in the project window to start editing information inside this event in the editor tab in the lower zone. If the editor tab's open, I can simply drag and drop another audio file over and that event will load up in the editor tab down in the lower zone. At the top of our project area, we've got the timeline and we've got a left and right locator which we can move by picking up on with our mouse and dragging. I can click on the cycle button in the transport window and this will turn blue. When I hit play or record, our project will loop in between that left and right cycle point. It's important to be able to zoom in and out quickly for editing, and I'm using G and H on my computer keypad. You can also use the handles in the bottom right hand corner of your project area to zoom in and out vertically and horizontally. You can hold down with your mouse inside the timeline in both the project area and also the lower zone, so you can have different zoom settings for different work areas. At the top of the inspector, you can change the color of each track that you have selected, which is handy if you want to have different colors for, say, different instruments. I said before that VST instruments contain sounds, but let's look at the concept behind triggering these sounds. So I've opened Groove Agent SE4, where there's a whole lot of different patterns. I can click on these patterns and they're going to play in time with my project, which is great. When I find one I like, I simply drag and drop it straight over into the Groove Agent SE4 track. We haven't dropped any sound into the project. If you double click on the event, you can see that we've dropped MIDI events or MIDI data. Let's raise this window up to get a better view. We can maximize this window by clicking on this little arrow in the top right hand corner to get a better view of all of the MIDI events. Minimize it again by doing exactly the same thing. We can view MIDI data in Cubase in a couple of different ways. Looking at events like this is great for music, but for drums, it's easier to create a drum map. In the Groove Agent tab in the inspector, I can select Create Drum Map from Instrument. And if I double click on the event in the project window, the drum editor will open in the lower zone. In this video, we've covered a lot of Cubase basics. In the next video, we're going to compose and create a piece of music using chord pads and chord tracks, which we're then going to use to build a complete track. Thanks for sticking by. Like this video if you've learned something. Please subscribe to our channel for more videos like this and stop by and leave us comments to let us know how you're being creative with Cubase. I'm going to catch you in the next video. First we fall.